We're back with more audiobooks. What have you been reading? I have just completed The Devil in the Shape of a Woman, Witchcraft in Colonial New England by Carol F. Carlson. This is work and um, conclusion pulled together over really going back through history and so many history of sources. Um, she kind of explains her process a little at the end of the book, or is it at the beginning? Don't remember. But uh, what I kind of really walked away from it from, there's a lot of detail and kind of a little, a little subtle changes over time, but very much is this like, if you had an issue with your neighbor, you just accused them of witchcraft, and they might get screwed out of their livelihood, out of their job, out of their house, their home. Um, they might get killed. They might be tortured. They might be permanent. Their name might be permanently slandered and destroyed for the rest of their life. Even if they did get off scot free, it wasn't fully scot free. Their their name was officially damaged. Um, you could refute and say, no, that person is trying to destroy my good name. But oftentimes, it sounded like what won out was that you were branded a witch and thus somehow negative in some way or capacity. Um, a lot of the information pulled revolves around the succession um, and the passing down of funds and property from <clears throat> uh, generation to generation. So in this time, the overarching religious view were that women, women were below men, and that women were linked to Adam and Eve, and Eve was the one that first decided to take the apple, therefore she's in the wrong. She, bad, he, okay. Um, that was kind of the thinking, and that women were given a shittier lot in life because they were attempting to make up for Eve's wrongdoing. So they should just accept the shittinesses given to them with open, grateful hearts. Uh, so basically, any woman that was out of line in the court, in the accordance of what a good woman, quote unquote, looked like and or acted. So if a woman was not subservient to their uh, religious clergy, um, their community, the male hierarchy within that community, uh, the male hierarchy at home, if they spoke out against anything of that nature, <clears throat> they were potentially branded as a witch or seen as troublesome to later down the line have uh, fuel, have it be fuel to throw against them <clears throat> in evidence of being a witch. Oftentimes, and I think this is a more well-known fact, a lot of <clears throat> women's affairs or what was passed down from mother to daughter knowledge about uh, child rearing, um, midwifery, um, medicines, and whatnot, that was woman to woman. It was never really information given to men, so that was another thing that was very hush-hush, you didn't talk about it, and therefore potentially seen as witchcraft, and oh my gosh, um, you know, you have a social obligation to help your neighbor give birth, if she's about to give birth. And if you're present, and the woman giving birth loses her child, potentially you can be accused of witchcraft. <laughs> Oh, man, it sounds like most of these uh, accusations came from people who had some kind of issue with another person just because they didn't like them or they didn't they were they didn't like their lot in life and they hated on somebody else um, or somebody was getting out of outside of the social societal norms and that was wrong. You know, you weren't allowed to be an individual if you were a woman. Um, men were accused of being witches, but more than often than not, got off with a slap on the wrist, and more often than not, weren't killed for it. 
oftentimes men who came forward, um, or who were accused of being witches, um, the, the accusation was just like, that's impossible. Go away. You know? Um, or, no you're not. I know you're telling me that you are, but no you're not. Go away, you're wasting our time. Things were taken on a whole new fresh level of dumb and serious when it came to women. Over time, it sounds like from the accumulated information in this book, most of the people that were accused of being witches had the tendency to be, uh, in their, like, 18s to 30s, early 30s. Um, and the term, like, old crone and hag was usually used to, to describe somebody's characteristics, not necessarily that they were actually older. Um, it was considered a descriptor for describing an un, um, unliked personality trait, or a unlike, un, unnice commentary, uncouth way of being, or unladylike mannerisms. Children, obviously, were accused and killed. It didn't matter whether you were four all the way into your teens. If you were accused of being a witch and they proved you somehow, then off with, you know, you'd hang or burn. Or, you know, they'd kill you. <laughs> um, oftentimes, the, the people that got readily and consistently um, labeled witch was because they got labeled it first or one time, they got off kind of at least with their, away with their life, they got away with their life, and then again and again it would crop up in that same person's life over and over and over, the accusations. And even if that person um, were to die and move on of natural causes, the potential for any females in that lineage would also be remembered and being like, right, they come from a line of witches. Let's label them accusation witch. You are, you're, you're from a witch family. You must be a witch. You know, that's why. Hell, I think one example was the dude crossed some lady's path and later that evening he had a bout of diarrhea and then said that she was a witch because they crossed each other. Like, they walked past each other. Therefore, he must be a witch. Uh, she must be a witch. And it's just like, Okay, just, just forget about what you probably decided to eat earlier that day. Just blame it on somebody else, right? Like, oh, the petty shittery. <laughs> Revolving around why someone would, would label somebody a witch is just ridiculous. And I don't think I completed my thought in the beginning of... So if property and funds and finances were normally passed from male to male, um, usually in the kind of, upon, you know, the male's death, his, the certificate and everything would be like, I say that I bequeath so much to my wife to be given over the course of her life so that she can have, live out her life in, in a certain degree of comfort, the rest to my kids, um, males obviously got more than the females and the kids, um, and or they could give them to neighbors or, you know, give property away to other people. Even when, I, I think this is, um, not all the stories are like this, but it sounds like it was more common than not, that even when the entire estate and funds were put into the woman's or the wife's name, the widow's name, sometimes the community would just block her ability to access those things. Um, and she'd have to go to, like, you know, the community head or the councils, and they'd be like, you must be a witch. <laughs> Because you have so much, you know, financial stuff, and the fact that your husband left all of it to you, and you have no children, or, um, you know, it, it just, they did not like, at this time, women who were well off financially, in any capacity, it seemed. It seemed like more often than not for a chunk of time, if you were an educated, high-class woman, you were less likely to be accused. Um, but over time, even that devolved. It was a slight shielding, but you could still be accused. More often than not, it was mostly other women accusing of other women uh, that they were witches. 
it sounds like. Or the first accusation was slung either by a man or a woman at a woman. Um, and then it would be perpetuated further predominantly by other women. That's my takeaway also from this book. And the author goes on to kind of discuss that perhaps the, the reasons for all the, the fits and or the, the possessions, um, the kind of body contortions and everything that, you know, uh, speaking in tongues and other stuff that people who were accused of witchcraft then did. Either they did it because they wanted to be convincing to accuse um, another person of witchcraft and get them in trouble, killed, whatever you want, negative impact. And it was possibly an outlet to really vent when otherwise you weren't allowed to speak about this stuff, um, to go against the grain and the social norm, to, to blatantly say to a clergy person or a male in power that, yes, I consorted with the devil and I did a pact, um, and really push those extremes to, you know, let yourself uh, vent at them, call them names, um, out loud get that inner turmoil of why, you know, am I supposed to be so rigid in this society as a woman and then at the same time I can't have, you know, my own uh, business or, you know, I can't speak out for myself because that's not what a good woman is supposed to do. Uh, why am I being accused? Oh, fine, you, you want me to be a witch so bad, I will become one. Like, I will just say what you want me to say, and in doing so, allow myself a chunk of time to just let you verbally have it. Uh, and, and oftentimes, a lot of these processes, I'm pretty sure, included torture. The book never said blatantly torture. It sounds like it just had them in jail for stupidly long amounts of time until confession was had. Uh... But there's other chunks of history that say torture was a heavy, involved process um, with certain cases around the, you know, around England. And it got so rampant at one point that for a while, um, the church kind of began to come to its senses and was just like, are we doing the right thing? We're killing a lot of people. Uh, hmm. Maybe this isn't witchcraft. And they began to kind of dial it back and just really be like, no, she's not doing witchcraft. She's fine. Just let it go. Um, and they began to kind of come to their senses and do that for a while. And then it stopped and then it kicked back up again in the sense of Salem, I do believe, happened. <laughs> uh, um, and a lot, of, a lot of women, you know, making the long, arduous journey to a new land to settle uh, felt like they could have a leading, um, guiding influence in religious practices, in their Christian religious practices, but guys pretty much put, the, put, their, foot put their foot down and was just like, send them away, send them into like far, far away from the community so we can guide the community to how we want to shape it, and or kill them off or send them back on the boat get them out of here, because that's not what we want. Oh, boy. There's a lot of uh, tiny detail minutia in the background that occurred that led to the old temperature of the climate in these communities to basically point a finger at someone and say witchcraft. A lot of the women that did have their names pretty much slandered knew kind of that it would be like this for life. And they kind of either fled the community to save their own skins to start again, or they would live on the outskirts of the community or another community. Um, yeah, until they died. Uh, another thing that I, I noticed, it sounds like the community was very much a hub. And yes, you're like, well, duh, of course it's a hub. It's called a community. But it sounds like that if you were poor, impoverished, couldn't pay for certain things, that you potentially 
were literally provided for by the community and sustained by it. So I, I'm, she didn't go into super detail about it, about what, who went to where and to whom, but it sounded like if the widower, you know, didn't have the big hunking man around to do everything for her, right? And she couldn't, you know, she didn't have anybody to clean up after. that uh, she would get her, her food, her provisions, her basic, bare minimal sustenance survival stuff from the community. Literally, it sounds like she would get food from somebody in the community. And the community would potentially be like, oh, I hate having to provide for them. They're constantly mooching. I'm constantly having to provide for them. If we just label her a witch, she might disappear. They'll either kill her or she'll run away. And that little house, that little chunk, that tiny bit of property that she still owns will be given to somebody or the community. So I think it was, uh, the author indicates that it was also a way of eliminating somebody who wasn't helpful to the community anymore. I feel like there's better ways of doing that. It's like washing their hands of somebody. Just because they didn't like them or they didn't want to deal with them. A lot of doctoring and nursing... Uh, medical things was very much a woman's uh, realm for a very big chunk in time and over the course of this kind of witch fiasco and pointing of fingers it somewhere translated and swapped hands into the men men's realm um, but it was very much like the midwifery and you know the whole accusation of being a witch, it's just like, and if, if you were killed, all that information is gone, can't be passed down orally to another person. Um, and guys pretty much started making up, whether, regardless of if some men did learn from other women or not, I'm pretty sure that might have been hush-hush, that was never addressed, but it, it sounds like they would begin to began to make up some stuff about reproduction <laughs> that was kind of kooky, which I think sometimes exists to this day in some people's brains. Moving on! <laughs> so the witch really, the, the concept of uh, the idea, which really revolves around the outspoken woman, the woman who wanted to live her life in her way, who, who had dreams and endeavors, wanted to travel, who did not want to stick to the social norms of society. Um, she wanted more than what was, you know, socially, societally decreed as this is only what you can have in life. Um, she wanted to become an entrepreneur. You know, she, she wanted to have um, medical education um, and, and help other women. She wanted had to have autonomy over her, you know, reproductive cycles, um, and aid other women in that process as well. We are seeing a re-blossoming emergence of people who are taking um, that title of witch and using it very openly. Um, I think it's kind of turning into a bit of a commodity and like socially normal almost. Um, or very fluffy and light and um, love and light, quote unquote. But uh, there, there are still communities out there that very much have taken on this title, um, hold on to it to, to this day, and are trying to take back the power in it. That it was never something really bad. Um, well, it's other, other, I think groups very much see it as, you know, being a rogue, fighting for what y your community needs or you need um, to be the best woman that you can be. And I think the very light, fluffy, airy, gloss over, um, commonly partaken, commoditized view of the witch in social society now needs to go back and learn a thing or two about its history, especially if that's what you're going to say that you are. Uh, there's a lot of history behind uh, which in the term which and uh, those who 
partake of these circles. In history, as well as in myth and in lore, um, in various esoteric and religious practices, a lot of these things are very ancient. I guess I'm, I'm just really kind of bummed that it's just so uh, light, fluffy, commoditized, and um, lacking depth. I really feel like a lot of the commonplace grabbing for the word witch is a very that. It's very shallow. That's just my opinion. Is there depth? Yes. Do you have to go looking for that depth? Yes. Do you have to hunt and do your research? And should you do your research and hunt? Yes. Do I have hope for the future and this community? Yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> I, I just think that the, the new wave maybe is coming through, those who choose to stay behind, that have been on a lot of media platforms, are either going to choose to stick around or move to other more secluded places where there is a, um, <clears throat> you have to want to be there to socialize with them and to uh, take in any information they have to exchange or provide. Which, I mean, there's a barrier, but at least it's still an option. And also you get to support them as a result. So, if you're on a curious witchy path, I hope that you give yourself time and you understand that you should probably do a lot of research um, to get your bearings and go from there. So that you can decide what's going to work for you and what's not going to work for you. Um, the only thing that's going to work for you is what works for you, and the only reason, and the only way you're going to find that out is if you absorb a lot of information. You will not be come magically proficient at uh, cards overnight. Um, come to other witches in the community with good questions and well thought out ones. Not with what does, um, what do I do with a wand? Or what kind of wand should I have? That's all stuff that you can get online as far as information goes. Do your research. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah. Uh, that, that, I think, went off on a tangent, um, but that was a, a really interesting book, at least for me, just to see where a lot of, you know, like, all, there are great chunks of our history in humanity's, you know, um, movement across the globe that's really stupid. Um, and I think this one is definitely one of them. It's just like, I have a petty disagreement with my neighbor. I'm going to call them a witch. But, I mean, you know, history repeats itself. It's always, usually, seems to be in the pattern of some group of people in power, another group um, being oppressed in some way, and saying that they want equality. Hmm, doesn't that sound familiar right now? Um, but I, I think that just repeats itself. It's been going on since the dawn of people. At least in, in large groups. Or when large groups and or civilizations, civilizations and or people of different backgrounds and thoughts meet and collide. Why can't we all just get along? Oh my god! The, the amount of leaps and bounds and cool awesome shit that we could do if we all just fucking got along would be so great anyways this is super tangent um i appreciated the book if you're into history specifically um revolving around salem witch trials it does touch upon that very much and uh where the you know the history of which potentially one chunk of it came from specifically in um communities how it interacted with communities why people were, were accused, and how those um, people labeled that uh, interacted with church and with hierarchy, specifically males, 
then yeah, that's the book for you if you're, you're into any of that. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, morning, evening, noon, and whatever time of day it is for you. Until next time, bye for now.